And with that being said, we will go ahead and begin today's presentation. So, again, good afternoon to everyone, and thank you all for joining us with today's grant solicitation webinar, the OJJ DP FY 2020 Training and Technical Assistance to Expand Children's Advocacy Centers Serving American Indian slash Alaska Native Communities Solicitation. My name is William Moore, and I am with OJJDP's National Training and Technical Assistance Center. And as your technical host, I would like to take a couple of minutes to discuss a few features of the Adobe Connect webinar platform for individuals to keep in mind. Please note that this event is being recorded. Our webinar will be linked and posted on our YouTube page at a later date. For those wishing to download a copy of important documents and resources related to today's webinar, you may do so by locating the handouts pod directly above the chat area. Here, you will also find an FAQ for webinar participants that will likely address technical related questions. Click on the name of the file and then click the download button. Today's webinar, there will be a Q&A session where the presenter will address some of the questions posed during the presentation. Please type your questions into the chat box as they arise. For those of you participating in today's webinar as a group, please take a minute to help us count. If you are viewing by yourself, there's no need to type anything at this time. However, if you're viewing in the group, please Type in the total number of additional people in the room with you today. Again, if you're viewing alone, there's no need to type anything at this time. However, if you are viewing in a group, please type in the total number of additional people in the room with you today. Again, thank you all for joining us for today's presentation. I will now turn it over to Kristen Cracky for today's webinar. Krista, take it away. Thank you very much, William. Hello and welcome everybody to the webinar here. Uh, need one second here to get my slides working for me. Uh, we are very pleased to, um, that you are interested in our training and technical assistance solicitation that expands child advocacy centers in American Indian and Alaska Native communities. Uh, shorthanded to TTA to expand CACs in AIANU, our community. Uh, during today's webinar, we are going to provide a general overview of the program, an overview of the goals and objectives, and cover some of the uh, basic application requirements. However, everyone is encouraged to read the solicitation in detail. Uh, more than once would be um, a suggested tip, and we will cover some tips at the end as well. So uh, for your note, there is an active link here to the solicitation, and as I indicated, we will not cover all of the details of the solicitation today, so it is important to reference this, uh, um, these details at the link provided here. And note that all applications are due no later than 11.59 p.m. Eastern Time, April 7th. So this uh, training and technical assistance project is a five-year grant program made as a cooperative agreement award. A cooperative agreement means basically that uh, OJJDP, my office, will be a uh, partner in the implementation of this work um, 
with the selected awardee. Uh, the implementation will be much more collaborative than a typical federal grant. So we will have OJJP will more have more active involvement. This solicitation provides funding to support training and technical assistance services to develop, improve, and expand child advocacy centers and their multidisciplinary team response to child abuse cases in American Indian and Alaska Native communities. The overall goal of this project is to increase the capacity of tribal CACs and CACs serving AIAN youth to effectively investigate, prosecute, and intervene in child abuse cases. The objectives of the program include the following, providing in-depth technical assistance for federally recognized tribes who are working to develop and implement CACs and or multidisciplinary teams. So you're gonna provide technical assistance. You're going, the objective would be to develop training opportunities for these federally recognized tribes, as well as to develop publications and resources and adapt and enhance existing child advocacy center resources for youth, youth in tribal communities and Alaska Native villages. And then lastly, to collaborate with OJJDP and our national and regional child advocacy center partners to provide TTA to ensure the sustainability of this project. I'll talk a little bit more about the partners um, now. Uh, so the o OJJDP currently supports a range of national and regional child advocacy partners and your, uh, the expectation for this solicitation would be to partner with them. There is the National Children's Alliance is one of the national partners. There are four regional child advocacy centers, one in the Northeast, one in the Midwest, one in the South, and one in um, covering the West. So those four regions, the National Children's Alliance, and then two partners that provide training and technical assistance dedicated to improving um, training and technical resources for child abuse professionals, and then one for prosecutors. So when I reference OJJDP's national and regional partners, that's what I'm talking about. So eligibility under this solicitation is really open to, to everyone in standard solicitation. So that would be any nonprofit, including tribal nonprofit, faith and community-based organizations, institutions of higher education, including tribal institutions of higher education, public agencies and consortiums with demonstrated organization and community-based experience working with American Indian and Alaska Natives. So as with all solicitations, um, you know, the, you, that profit needs to be waived, but it's open really to anyone that, that is nonprofit or an institution of higher education or public agency. What is critical here is the um, expertise of the applicant. So the emphasis here is uh, demonstrating uh, community-based and organizational experience working with American Indian and Alaska Native. I'm gonna talk a little bit more about this as well in a minute in terms of scope of work. But I would, I would, what we're saying here is that the entity applying is less important than the expertise and the demonstrated capability for the scope of work that the solicitation calls for. So um, this is a little bit about what I was just saying about the eligibility solicitation is open to all. However, the expertise is, is paramount for the solicitation. Um, a successful applicant would need to have expertise in, in delivering, coordinating, and developing resources all related to training and technical assistance. So they need to be able to deliver and um, develop TTA, need to have competencies in working with American Indian and Alaska Native service delivery, we're looking for expertise in the child advocacy center model 
including uh, or or more generally broadened to child welfare and tribal child welfare. So some content expertise. And then uh, scope in terms of at a national level. This TA provider will be working with American Indian Alaska Native uh, tribes with sovereignty, um, but we are looking at that scope across the continental, you know, lower 48 states and Alaska. So a national national level scope. So someone that has experience delivering at a national level as opposed to a local level. Okay, so for this solicitation, we are looking for one um, and expect to make one award uh, to one TTA provider with a maximum dollar amount of a million dollars, so up to one million, with a period of performance beginning July 1st, 2020, four or five years or 60 months as indicated before and as a cooperative agreement as described a minute ago as a partner with OJJDP and these other national and regional CAC partners. So I'll talk a little bit about what a successful applicant will look like, um, an application would look like. It will be important to provide a clear description of the nature and scope of the problem this program will address. Detail a clear understanding of how to develop, improve, or expand CACs and MDTs, multidisciplinary teams, in response to child abuse for the AIAN communities and um, working with them. Detail how the project will operate throughout the funding period, specifying the strategies, deliverables, and timelines as um, concretely and quantifiably as possible. I'll touch on that in a minute. Describe in depth the experience and capability of the applicant organization. So as I outlined before, and you can see in the long title for this solicitation, we're looking for particular attention to um, expertise with child, um, ch I'm sorry, tribal child welfare issues and CACs, as well as demonstrated expertise in delivering and coordinating training and technical assistance at a national level. So all of those words in the title, TTA, AIAN expertise, and CAC expertise are what we're looking for. This um, OJJDP is um, through this solicitation and two others, launching an American Indian Alaska Native Child Advocacy Center expansion project. This is one solicitation in the larger plan. So this slide is here to share with you the um, other parts of the plan. We have two other solicitations currently actively open for competition right now. The first is the Alaska Children's um, Advocacy Center expansion, which is focused and concentrated on um, the areas within Alaska, uh, uh, Alaska Native communities. There are two funding categories. Category one develops new satellite child advocacy centers in Alaska. Category two provides capacity enhancements for the existing child advocacy centers already um, operating in Alaska. And there's a hyperlink to that solicitation. And then the second solicitation is the Tribal Child Advocacy Center expansion for the lower 48 states for the tribal areas in the lower 48. And this is an active um, hyperlink for that solicitation. And that solicitation focuses also on funding new satellite child advocacy centers for tribes and um, those serving tribal areas. So if you um, have less familiarity with child advocacy centers, there's a couple of resources here. There's a link on the map that shows you all of the child advocacy centers in Alaska and um, tribal areas. There's one map for each state. So Alaska is, uh, has a map of all of those CACs um, within the state. And then there's a map that outlines 
all of the child advocacy centers in tribal areas across the U.S. There's also a link here for membership requirements that you can find at the National Children's Alliance website, which describes the difference in membership between a fully accredited child advocacy center, a satellite child advocacy center, which is a particular type of membership designation and requires partnership with a fully accredited child advocacy center serving as the um, the lead child, uh, the lead CAC overseeing that satellite development. So some of those membership requirements are absolutely critical to understand and know about and is one of those organizational capability um, requirements that we have when we're soliciting. So it's, it's the eligibility is broadly open, but the expertise we're looking to deliver is very specific and this is one of those areas of expertise. For more general information about Children's Advocacy Centers and OJJDP's funded work in this area, please click on this link here to see all that OJJDP funds in this area. So the um, agency that my office, OJJDP, is under is the Office of Justice Programs, and there are some priority areas for all solicitations that the Office of Justice Programs is currently pri prioritizing. And um, right now, a, a specific example is rural communities and uh, being qualified opportunity zones. So as um, uh, this is something that applicants for the CAC solicitations that I just indicated would uh, qualify for, take a look at this. I don't think that it, it would apply to a national PTA provider. Um, but it's here for your um, information because it is a standard part of all of our solicitations as a priority, and there's instructions in the solicitation to guide you. Uh, the same is, is true with performance measures, just to give you some application tips and general awareness about the solicitations. They all require performance measures. Um, performance measures are goals and objectives, the performance measures are tied directly to goals, objectives, and deliverables. And however, we want to clarify for folks that applicants are not required to submit performance data with their application. The performance measures information is provided in the solicitation so that applicants have a, a, an awareness of the type of performance data that will be required of the, of the selected awardee. So it gives you a good orientation to the types of uh, data collection that you would need to do as a selected awardee. If you'd like more information about performance measures and the type of performance measurement activity that is required under an OJJDP grant, there is a hyperlink here for you as well. So on page 14 and 15 of the solicitation um, outlines the specific details that would be required for you to successfully submit your application. Page 14 includes very specific information about what an applicant should do with some very important instructions about registering DUNS numbers and things like that. Then um, on page 15, is a section what an application should include. And there's a specific checklist in there to help make sure that you have covered and met all the requirements outlined in detail throughout the solicitation. That's summarized for you on page 15. Please note that there are two critical areas, elements of the solicitation that are required in order for the application to even um, be considered through peer review competition. It, so it's considered an incomplete application without a project narrative and a budget and budget narrative. So you must have those two things for the, your application to be considered complete. Certainly the content and the eligibility and the areas of organizational capability that I described are critical elements of your application. Um, those would be considered through the competitive peer review process. 
So a few additional tips. Um, review Grants 101 on OJP website. This is a useful tool for all of our applicants. I mentioned a minute ago the DUMS number. It can take 10 to 14 days, so if you don't have one, you need to jump right away on getting registered and getting that DUMS number in order to apply. I mentioned earlier, read the entire solicitation um, in carefully and in detail, and, and I like to recommend more than once because there's a lot of information that you can pick up um, through second and third read. Identify a, a contact um, partner or project partnership ASAP and get whatever um, MOUs and cooperative agreement um, letters and things like that that outline your partnership commitment if you are applying um, with other partners, co-applicants. Uh, here are just a couple of other um, tips that are available. Work on the budget early, physically check off every item on the application checklist, um, but most importantly here, oh, and I do want to highlight there are percentages in the solicitation that show where the um, each section of the application, how they're weighted for peer review, and you will note in this application that organizational capability is heavily weighted due to the reasons that I've described on the webinar about the importance of that expertise and that scope of work that the TTA provider is going to deliver consistent, um, consistent with the, the project scope outlined in the solicitation and the level of um, tribe, tribal CACs that this TTA provider will be supporting. So you will note those percentages, and that will give you an idea of how the peer review um, is going to weight and rank each of those sections. It gives you an idea of where you want to put your emphasis in the application process. And then lastly on this slide, would, would call out the importance of submitting your application in advance of the deadline. The standard recommendation is at least two days. I honestly would recommend um, more days than that because you need time in case there's any um, technical glitches, uh, any problems with DUNS numbers, people run into all sorts of last minute things. There's also personal things that come up and, and you know, we've even had weather related issues. So make sure you get your applications in early and will alleviate a lot of stress um, for you and prevent your application from being um, kicked out just simply from missing the deadline. So uh, we always, like to recommend that. It, the system can be um, bogged down as everyone tries to submit at the last minute. So, um, Some other useful links. Again, the link to the solicitation. There's a, a frequently asked questions resource there for you and an Office of Justice Programs resource guide which will help take you through just the, the standard processes and steps for uh, submitting a grant application to our agency. That wraps up the uh, solicitation details, the overview of the solicitation. And we will, I think we have a few minutes for questions, as uh, is the case with any solicitation. We are somewhat limited in, in being able to take specific um, questions beyond the scope of the solicitation for to be fair in the competitive process. So we do refer our questions to the response center, which is up here on the slide for you now. So we will, if there are some questions, feel free to type them into the chat box now. We will take, um, take a few of them uh, as they are good for the general order, and then uh, we will refer you to the response center for any final or follow-up questions that we are not able to address today. So I see one question about whether state agencies are eligible, eligible to apply. Uh, and uh, public agencies, doesn't matter what level, the, uh, whether it's state or local, whatever. If you're a public agency, you're eligible to apply. However, I will point um, all applicants to 
the importance of the organizational capability, that we are looking for a national um, training and technical assistance provider in your organizational expertise. So we want expertise in uh, delivering training and technical assistance uh, nat at a national level in the area of expertise related to child advocacy centers and with expertise in working with and serving American Indian Alaska Native communities. So this, this solicitation is open to all, but the expertise is the paramount to consider. Are there any other questions? The second piece of the question I see is if awarded the, the if awarded the solicitation, the awardee must serve child advocacy centers nationally is the question. Uh, the answer is yes at a national Scope. However, the TTA provider is serving Alaska um, Native and American Indian communities, CAC is serving those communities. So let me go back to the slide. Maybe one second. This is an important thing to clarify, so I thank the person for their question. And bear with me while I find that slide. I just went past it. Okay, so the training and technical technical assistance provider is servicing the awardees of these solicitations with a priority on the, the tribal child advocacy centers. So you'll see we're going to fund up to four tribal child advocacy centers, up to four satellite and up to 13 um, capacity enhancements in Alaska. So all of that work is going to be supported under the TTA provider. However, there is a priority emphasis in the tribes in the lower 48 because um, we have additional partners and additional resources uh, focused on Alaska. Um, but the TTA provider is going to work with those communities and partner with our national and regional child advocacy centers to develop and enhance existing CAC resources uh, at a national scale. So the work is at a national scale, but focused very much on AIAN communities implementing CACs and multidisciplinary teams. There's a question, is the expectation that most TTA would be distance-based or on-site? The answer to that question is the expectation would be both. The uh, provider needs to be have the capacity to deliver uh, training and technical assistance in multimodal uh, methods, and we would expect on-site training and support, but not exclusively. So it needs to be multimodal. Thank you for that question. Any other questions that I might be able to take on the call today? All right, it looks like that is all the questions we have. I see William has put the response center slide back on the screen. If other questions come in as you um, dig in, please refer those questions to the Response Center, and we will take care of getting back to you on that uh, right away. Well, with that, I'm going to turn back to William for us to finish out the webinar. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you very much, Kristen, and thank you to all of those who have joined us today. Uh, before we adjourn, we do just have a few brief announcements uh, for you all to keep in mind. Uh, again, before we wrap up, First off, I want to make sure that you all are able to stay in touch with OJJDP's Intech by following us on Facebook or even joining our listserv. Again, the links uh, for both of those are live here on this slide. And if you would like to get in contact with OJJDP, you can feel free to contact the OJJDP TTA Help Desk. The contact information is included in this slide.
Do you have a training or technical assistance need? Well, if so, please submit your request via OJJDP's TTA360 platform. The information to contact OJJDP's uh, TTA360 or access OJJDP's TTA360 platform is located on this slide. And if you all could, please be sure to join us for our upcoming events. We have two additional grant solicitations occurring March 20th and March 26th. The links to register or even learn more about each of these solicitations are uh, live and on this slide. And we also have a couple of other, of other uh, solicit, excuse me, webinars that are coming up for this month. One uh, coming up on March the 12th and then another on April 23rd. So feel free to, again, click on the live links or to either learn more or register for both of these webinars. And finally, before you all adjourn, we do have one uh, last poll question that we would like to ask uh, the audience. And here, we would like to know, how do you plan to apply? the information from this webinar in your work. If you notice, they are, there are boxes next to each of the options here on your screen. All you have to do is simply click the box or the square that correlates next to your answer. Please note that you can select multiple answers here, uh, not just one. You can select multiple answers. So feel free to let us know and indicate how do you plan to apply the information from this webinar in your work. And I'll give everyone just a couple of more seconds. And again, feel free to click and select any of the or multiple options that you all have here. And again, I'll give folks a couple of more seconds to do that. And I'll leave the poll up just for maybe a couple of, uh, about another minute for individuals. But nonetheless, I do want to thank again everyone for joining us today. With that, we will be concluding today's webinar. Again, thank you for joining us and have a great afternoon. Goodbye. The host has left the meeting. So at this time, the meeting will come to an end. Thank you and goodbye.